All right, everybody, final exam review date. On your final, half the exam is mechanisms. They're laid out exactly like this. There's a reason I chose this pair of mechanisms because it's the only time you're forced to do a specific mechanism. By that I mean when these are the two choices, you will be forced to do a chromic acid oxidation on your final exam. You will not be forced to do any other mechanism because it's always a choice. Please don't pick and choose half the mechanisms to study. <laughs> I'll have two mechanisms you studied and then the next two, you didn't study either one. Oh. For those students that try that and say, well, I'm just going to use my own discretion here. So what instead of doing what he says and picking one of these two and then picking one of these, I just put blah, blah. They're different mechanisms down there. OK, I had a student do this, and that's why we have to make this talk. They said, based on this wording, I don't know how they got this logic. They skipped both the first two and did both of the next two. I grade their first one of the next two and they get zero out of 12 for the first one. Case closed, the words say exactly that I'm going to do that. So please don't be that student, okay? You're always given the, those words and two boxes. You choose one box, then you move on to the next one. Got it? It is perfectly fine if you choose one, you start it and then realize I chose the wrong one. Guys, don't even panic at all. Cross off what you did, recommence with the one you want. Just make it clear, I didn't want that one, okay? Did that answer your question? No. Uh, so later for uh, mechanisms are either 25 or 75% of the exam, depending on which section you do better on. This is on the study guide. It says the exam is 50-50 mechanisms, multiple choice. That is 100% correct. I do not count it that way. I pick your better section, it counts 75%. I pick your worst section, it counts 25%. Case closed. So yeah, make sure you do a good job on one of the sections. We have another question. Well, I make each section a percent first. And then your better section, I count that 75% of your score. The worst section, 25% of the score. So on this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the first one and then change my mind, like I said, just to show you how that would work. Although I suspect if that ever happens, it would be the other direction. Uh, you would go with the second one, then realize, ah, I don't like that. And then you said, I'm, I'm gonna go over here and make this alkene. And then you realize I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. So you decided I don't want to do that one. What's a good cross out color? Purple. Uh, just say, I don't want to do that one. So clearly you're, you're doing the second one now, right? And it starts off the same way. Okay, and you're doing the second one, and it's going over here, and you get a cation that can resonate with an alcohol. Anybody want to tackle the second step? What happens to that cation? H2O goes to it. H2O in green. Oxonium ion. We had OH here and oxonium. And you're almost to that first product. Purple. What's going to grab that H? What's going to do it? Meow. You said meow. That's why they chuckle. I like that. Meow. And that gets you there. And then the fun. The fun is the you've only got four out of your 12 points. Okay. That's a small mechanism. Uh, you got to remember the first step is to protonate one of the double bonds to oxygen on the chromium species. 
Do not protonate it with water. You don't have a 16 pKa react before a negative five in any in this universe. And we'll continue in uh, blue. So I'd like to point out though, every time you've got the choices, you've got an answer box, a big empty answer box right below it. So this right side is like the answer box area. It'll be below your mechanism. Okay, so here we go. We got a chromic acid that's protonated. C R O O O H O H. Got a new proton up on the top one. Don't forget the plus charge. Pick one of the O's to be a new and make it do its new thing. To the chromium and moving on. I just need to see what's on the right side of that box. I think we can fit it. Electrons resonated up to the plus charge. Hope that made sense. There's a new bond here to an oxygen. It's an oxonium and a propyl at the end there. Oxonium. I'm going to go a little bit down. Everything I need. What's going to get rid of that extra H on the oxonium? Yeah. Acid catalyzed. Pretty much every time you use sulfuric acid, you're going to have to regenerate it. This is not a chromate ester yet. How do you know it's not a chromate ester? I got a quick way to tell you it's not a chromate ester. If it doesn't look like this chromium, with a carbon instead of one of the H's, it's not a chromate ester. It's got way too many oxygens to be this chromium. Okay, you gotta lose water. And then it will have two double bonds to O because it's an elimination creating a new pi. So HOH is water, right? Do yourself a favor, one of the OH's, draw the bond to H. You need both the acid and its conjugate base. Acid protonates, you don't need that. Acid protonates, base deprotonates, right? Uh, how are we gonna do this so wandering red arrows here? Grab H, sigma becomes pi, leaving group has to protonate and then it leaves. Or how about protonate as it leaves? Sound good? The protonation is inducing it to leave. You're, uh, you're one step away from the end. Hi. Sorry. Don't do that to me. Chromate ester right here. Double bond O, double bond O. That looks a lot like chromic acid. With one of the H's replaced by a C, that's an ester. If you look like an ic acid with one of your H's missing, replaced by a carbon, you are an ester, period. Whether it's nitric acid, phosphoric acid, carboxylic acid, periotic acid, ester take H off, put C in its place, that's an ester. Oxidation time, hot pink arrow. Get me there. Have we made hydronium yet? No, we have not. We did make water in this last step. We made water. You want to see it? Here comes the water. Water can become hydronium. What does water have to do to become hydronium? Get a proton. 
what proton exists in this species, the blue part, that does not exist in the blue part here, which is this part here. There's your three carbons. What H exists here that doesn't exist here? Because that's how you think through a mechanism when you're stuck. On the, well, I know what you're saying, but it's not correct. It's, it's actually a primary carbon. He said tertiary. I think he was saying the carbon with three bonds. <laughs> There's an H there. That's what he was trying to say. And there's the H. You need that H because it has to go away. Right? And that's the H. So start the arrows. To start the arrows. What happens to the sigma between the C and the H? Look at your product. There's a carbonyl. Those pair of, that pair of arrows can make a carbonyl. Sigma becomes pi is what I wanted to hear. And then the leaving group is HCRO3. That last step is the oxidation step. You don't have to write that on the test. Everything else was chromate ester formation. And this was your chromate ester. You don't have to write that on your test. So quick review, you're going to be given choices of doing two mechanisms. You'll notice on these two, chromic acid oxidation is there in each one. And it will happen on Wednesday, or Friday. Sorry, I don't want to scare the living light out of you. <laughs> it's Friday. Okay. And yeah, something very similar to what you saw right there is going to happen on Friday. Okay. And I promise. And remember, it's always choose between two boxes, put the answer underneath. 